Hello this is Matthew Randall and in today's tutorial uh, I want to have a look at the shadow map material that comes with um, Maya 2018.2 so between 2018.1 and 2018.2 there was an update to the shadow map material and how this behaves so this tutorial is going to cover that and again how uh, and, and also it's going to look at the AOVs because it has a slight impact on the AOVs that you want to create as well okay so in this scene we simply have I'm just going to shift to the perspective view um, uh, a crocodile model uh, a plane and a, an image plane here okay uh, I want to render it from this camera and obviously what I'm looking to do here is render out this crocodile so that I can integrate it onto this background okay so if we look at our render we'll see straight away that obviously we need to use a shadow map material here uh, in order to kind of capture uh, uh, that render okay so what I'm gonna do then is I'm going to um, I'm gonna go and select this plane and go right click and apply a shadow map material to that so I'm gonna go assign new material uh, into my Arnold shaders here and go and select the shadow map material click on that okay uh, let's have a look at our render now so you can see that we uh, now have a nice sort of shaded area here okay where our uh, uh, you can see that we not seeing a plane here and just a sort of shade here okay uh, or, or our shadow here which is what we want for our, our visual effects scene okay um, one of the things that's happening here is that this background is kind of slightly blown out uh, and the reason for that is uh, because what's happening is um, the uh, 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 we actually, if I go into our perspective panel, let's just go into our perspective, uh, you'll see that we also have a uh, 360 degree HDI image that I captured at the same location, which I'm using to light the scene. That's the only thing I'm using to light the scene. Um, and because that's visible in the camera, it's kind of causing problems with our image plane. So what we want to say is we want to kind of go, no, we don't want this okay to be directly visible in the camera and you can actually see that the outer edge is kind of between here and the camera so you can see it's kind of causing the whole thing to fade okay so while we want it to light the scene we don't want this directly visible in the camera so I'm just going to turn that to zero okay so now if I go back to our camera okay and do a render let's have a look what we've got here you'll see that now I can see the background properly and I can get a better idea of uh, how this is going to uh, uh, come together okay great now what I want to do is I want to um, uh, I want to kind of I want to actually uh, have some specularity here so I want the crocodile to reflect onto this floor a little bit okay so um, and also at this point if I wanted to I could kind of adjust the intensity of the lighting a little bit um, uh, and maybe the color possibly I don't know but adjust the intensity of the lighting a little bit just to kind of uh, uh, make sure this crocodile is of the sort of right uh, it fits the, the lighting of this floor okay so now what I want to do is um, yeah I want to select this shadow map material again so I'm gonna go uh, I'll tell you what I'll do I'm gonna use the hypershade view so just in the hypershade view I'm just gonna select this shadow map material which we just created so that's this one here okay it says shadow map Okay, I'm going to create, select that one, um, and then what I want to do is, if I just move this out of the way, uh, because I've selected the shadow map material in here, I can now see it in this attribute window here. So that's all I wanted to do was just see it in that attribute window there. Great. So I've, with that selected, or I could just go, if I go onto here, I could just go right click and just go, um, sorry. Uh, uh, material attributes there we go and that, that would also select the material as well great so in here I want to add some indirect specular okay so you can see as soon as I do that I get this sort of specular reflection in here now that's a little bit too much for this kind of stone floor that we're trying to mimic so I want to kind of bring that down okay and so I can kind of look at this I might look at this a little bit more closely and get an idea of how that's looking okay so again that's possibly a little bit too much Okay, 
So that that's going to work for me in terms of specular reflection as well. The other thing I might want to do as well is have indirect diffuse. So what indirect diffuse will do is it will allow uh, the floor itself to kind of reflect back onto the crocodile. Okay, so I'm going to click on that again. Very subtle effect. Okay, uh, in this case. Okay, but it's worth kind of adding that in there. Okay, excellent. Okay. Um, so now what I want to do is start putting together all my render passes. Okay, so I'm going to go um, into my render settings and select the render passes that I want for my comp uh, composite. Now, every composite varies, but this is what I want for my composite. I want a Z pass. Okay, so I'm clicking on the AOVs. This is the um, uh, alternative output values. So these are different values that we can actually render out at, in different layers inside our EXR file. Okay, so I'm going to go uh, uh, output the Z here. So that's uh, that can be used as a depth image. And then what I want is I want the specular, uh, and I want the in fact actually I want the specular direct and the specular indirect, and I want the diffuse direct and the diffuse indirect, okay? Um, let's see what we get here. And then what I want is from my shadow mat, so at the bottom here we've got these three shadow mat ones, the one I want is the difference, okay? Now let's have a look at our renderer, okay? All right. And you can see now uh, that I can actually select some different passes here and have a look at those, okay? Now the one I'm really interested in, so if I look at my uh, diffuse direct, Okay, that looks good. My diffuse indirect. Uh, yeah, so you can see there's a little bit of light where it's hitting the floor, is bouncing back into the crocodile and kind of filling in the bottom a little bit as well. Okay, uh, here I've got my specular di uh, direct and here I've got my specular indirect. Okay, so again, this is the light that's reflecting off the crocodile onto the floor. We can still see that we've actually still got quite a lot of specular indirect there as well. So I might again, just go right click um, material attributes and just see if I can tune that a little bit more um, maybe just turn down uh, actually I didn't want to do it with intensity I tend to do I tend to do the indirect specular sorry with the actual color of the um, uh, the color of the reflection let's, have a, let's try that yeah again it's quite no, no, maybe I will use the intensity, that will do it. And just turn down the brightness of that. Again, it's quite subtle. Um, now, again, it depends how you think about this. You might kind of say, well, actually, I don't want to adjust it too much. I just want to give myself something that I can kind of work with in the composite. And that's fair enough if that's how you want to work it. Okay, so that's what I want as a pass. So I'm happy with that at the moment. Okay, now let's have a look at my... Um, uh, my uh, shadow difference okay yep so I've got my shadow difference there as well okay and let's have a look at my beauty pass that's all there as well okay so I think I've got everything that I want in my pass that's brilliant okay um, Great, okay, so I think everything's set up how I want, and also let's just have a look at this Z depth, okay? So here it just looks like it's blown out and it's white, and actually if we turn the gamma down, and if we, in fact you're going to have to manually put a figure in, in order to turn it down far enough, you can see it's just starting to come in here, okay? Um, so the depth is quite a large float image, so it can cope with, uh, it's got quite a lot of latitude to kind of be moved inside the composite, so don't worry about it being so bright. Uh, but you can see here we do have um, our depth data in here that we can use. So that's all in there as well. Um, excellent. Okay. Um, now, it may be that uh, uh, for the depth, um, in fact, let's just have a look at our alpha as well. Uh, I'm just going to quick look at my alpha. Uh, again, I'm going to have to just switch this back to zero in order to see the alpha correctly and look at the beauty pass. Okay, so this is our alpha here, okay. Um, okay, so um, now it all depends on what you're doing in the composite, whether this is the alpha that you want. Um, what I might do is, um, let's see if I turn off use background, uh, 
how does that affect things? I don't think that changes things there. So I'm going to turn that off. Okay. So I think one of the options that we've got is, and it might be that you want to do multiple renders to sort this out. It depends what you need in your composite. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, um, I'm going to select this image plane and just make this image plane invisible. So it's not visible. Okay. Now what that means is um, I now get an alpha mask, which I think is going to be a lot more useful in the composite than what we had before. And also the Z pass, if I go back to this, uh, might need to just turn it off alpha. Again, is going to be, oh, well, I suppose I've still got that in my Z pass. I'm not sure how I would turn that off. Okay, but that's still in the Z pass. That's not quite what I want, but we'll, we'll leave that for the time being. Okay, so um, let's have a look. So let's switch this back to zero and then just have a look at my shadow difference. Okay, so my shadow difference. So now my shadow difference has disappeared. Now the reason for that is if I go to the shadow map material properties, okay, and you'll see that I've got this use background selected here, which is fine, when I've got a background, but now I don't have a background. I've turned everything off. Okay. So if I want to see the shadow difference, I've got to select that. I've got to turn that back off. So it's just using the shadow map material itself as a background, as opposed to uh, using my image plane. So again, it's, it's all really about that alpha mask and what you feel you need from that alpha mask. Okay. Um, uh, it might be that you're only applying that alpha mask uh, uh, to uh, the crocodile element in 2D anyway, so that wouldn't cause you a problem, uh, etc. So that all depends on your composite. For me, I think this is what I want for my composite, okay? Um, and I think you know, and the, the, the grey, the, 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 the black colour is going to blend with the colour on my composite anyway. So I'm quite happy with this. Okay, so I feel that I've got everything I've needed and all my passes set up correctly. The one thing I need to do before I actually run a render is uh, in my render settings here with the AOV tag open, what I want to do is just click on the down arrow here. That's on one of these, any one of these. Okay, you only need to do this once. Uh, and what I'm trying to do is make sure that all the AOVs, all the different passes come out in the same image okay and don't come out as separate images because uh, that'd be a lot harder to, to to manage and that's not why i'm using it you know i'm using aovs to put them in the same image and and, and get around that so i want them all in the same exr image so if i go um okay if i go uh select aov node uh sorry select driver that one okay and you can see in here uh, there's an option called Merge AOVs. I've already clicked it, but just make sure that that is selected. You only need to do that once because all the AOVs use the same driver, uh, and that will merge your AOVs. Then back in your comma settings, obviously just adjust things like um, the size of your camera. So I'm going to make that bigger. Uh, sorry, I don't want that. Uh, HD. Um, and select your output. Uh, format so I'm going to output as EXR uh, and then when you render that out what you should do is get an EXR with all the different layers that you need for your composite okay so that was just a, a, a tutorial just taking you through how to use the 2018.2 um, to render out the um, different AO uh, 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 the, uh, the new to work with the new shadow map material and render out the AOVs that you need okay